Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all good. I'm joined by mom again today. Hello. Hey. <laughs> so today we're talking about our favorite websites and apps that property investors need to use. Okay, so, so why don't we start with um, the website where people go when they're searching for property because that probably mm -hmm. makes most sense. Yeah. So should we start with Rightmove? Yep, so Rightmove, they've got Rightmove commercial and obviously residential as well. But Rightmove is great and you can see like the history of the property as well. So you can see like what it sold for last and like what it sold for previously. Mm -hmm. And then obviously you can see like what properties in the area have sold for as well. So for example, if you want to buy a two bed property, then you might be able to look on right move and say okay the property next door sold for this amount so if i'm doing a buy refurbish refinance deal i know that the one next door sold for this so it's kind of key for like due diligence really yeah it is yeah. and i think also um it's just a really good indicator of the market mm -hmm. in your area so what is their demand for what is there a shortage of mm -hmm. which is really key i think when we come onto the next website which is if you're looking for commercial stuff which yeah. is uh so the website we tend to go to the most is property link estates gazette there's a couple of other ones and sometimes just the the commercial estate agents websites as well because they don't they don't always list everything mm -hmm. um so we'll use those websites for looking for commercial but really right move will still give you the best indication of what the market is doing yeah and what the demand is by looking at like what's sold recently what's left etc so say for example you might say like oh i want to develop a block of apartments like they're all going to be one bed if you can see in the area that like one beds don't really sell but there's loads of one beds on the market then it's kind of like an indicator to say okay is one beds the thing Do yeah you know what i mean yeah. cool and then the second website that this well the second kind of batch of websites that kind of goes with those is when you're maybe wanting to do a little bit more due diligence and find out more about the prices or maybe an estimate of the market valuation mm -hmm. Um, so mouse price is the one that we first found. So yeah. Can we talk a bit about that one? Yep. So what you can do on mouse price is, is if you've got the address of a property, then you can search it on mouse price and it will tell you, it tells you like the history mm. of like what it sold for before. And as well on mouse price, you can find an estimated valuation of the property. So if you want to buy a property and say it's on for a hundred grand and then you might look on mouse price and you might see that the valuation is saying like, 150 so then you can kind of like put it in your short list obviously mouse price isn't going to be like 100 percent accurate mm. and obviously you need to have, like get a valuation done but it kind of gives you a good indication about the area yeah it does and um another website that's kind of similar i'm not sure it goes into necessarily as much detail as mouse price but um recently when we were um when we were buying our current refurb and we were looking for comparables because we were having issues with the dam valuation. That's a whole nother video in itself. Um, I've figured out that basically mass price is only residential, which might be obvious to some. But um, another website that I found at the time was one called nethouseprices.com. Mm -hmm. So for some of the commercial stuff, I don't think it's going to cover all commercial stuff, but certainly for the kind of like smaller stuff, um, that will give you the actual sold prices because they're not on mass price. Yeah. Cool. So the next um, website that I'm going to talk about is one of my faves, um, so, and it's floorplanner.com. It's <laughs> I'm not the best at using it necessarily, just to put that out there, but it's a website that I came across um, from watching the videos from the guys at Pegasus Property. Yeah. It was one that Nick Leatherland, I think, did. Um, you know, really knows his stuff, really kind of like into a lot of detail. And he's got a, we'll try and leave the link actually in this one, but he's got a really, really good video where he talks through in quite a lot of detail how you work with the layouts in Floor Planner. Because particularly if you're doing conversions, particularly if you're doing HMO stuff, you need to be able to optimize the layout. Yeah. And so certainly for us in our, well, in both of the conversions that we've done now, getting that layout right is key because it could be the difference between a four bed and a five bed yeah. or a six bed and an eight bed. Yeah. And it could be the difference between, you know, three bathrooms or four bathrooms. So it could be the difference between your tenants having to share a bathroom and not. Yeah. So floorplanner.com, you've got to go on it. it is, I do find it a little bit clunky personally, but you've got to persevere with it because it's critical. Yeah. Layout is critical to property. Yeah, definitely. So in terms of finding tenants for our properties, we only use Spare Room and it's pretty easy to use. Spare Room's really good if you wanna test the demand in an area. 
So you can have a look on there and see like how many tenants are looking for a property in that particular area mm -hmm. versus how many properties are actually available. So it kind of helps you do a bit of due diligence as well. It does. But then obviously yeah. for us, that's where we list our properties and we put our advert on there. So yeah. Mm. So we've we have um, put something on open rent the once. We don't use it a lot. Mm -hmm. We did actually when we had the essays. We used open rent when we were kind of trying to fill demand in the quieter periods. And I would say open rent. And, and I helped somebody recently get some tenants through open rent. So open rent, I think is very, very good generally for like single lets and obviously because it pushes through to the other channels like Zoopla mm -hmm. and right move as well. If you've got the right documents for it. So open rent is worth looking at. Yeah. The next one we've got is go tenant. Now I kind of feel as though that there's not much I can say about this one. So go tenant is one that we were recommended by, um, by our friends, uh, Sean and Ashley from Urban Homes. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it was something that they used and they were raving about it because I must say, um, you know, there's even though we've got a virtual assistant that helps out with our um, paperwork, with HMO there's, there are so many things that you've got to kind of like stay on top of and we were struggling to find software that did that so um, I think it was Ashley actually that first mentioned GoTenant that they use for managing viewings then you know, managing sort of like ASTs and end dates and even direct debits as well, I think it connects to. Yeah. So definitely check out Go Tenant. Um, so we do, do use it for our properties, but we haven't set it up personally because our, our virtual assistant has done that for us. Yeah. Yeah. So the next tool that we recommend, I think it's an app and a website and it's called DocuSign. So this means that tenants can electronically sign documents. And it sounds like a really simple, basic thing, but I can't think of anything worse than having ASTs in paper form that someone would have to look after and be responsible for. So by having DocuSign, it means that everything is electronic and we put everything in a Google Drive so that it's all kept safe. So we honestly literally have everything in Google Drive. So any documents from tenants, such as their like passports or whatever, they're kept in the Google Drive. And Google Drive is very secure, just to add that, because I know somebody's asked that the once on a video in terms of, is it private? But it, it is private and secure. Yeah. It's all safe. Yeah. But yeah, literally we keep everything in there. So like HMO licenses, even like marketing pictures, just everything is in Google Drive. Yeah, and well. Google Sheets. So we use, I mean, obviously we use Google Documents, but Google Sheets, it's just like Excel. Um, but Google Sheets is definitely the thing that I use in terms of for the budgets and for just like tracking the cost. I mean, one of the reasons that I love Google, like using Google Docs is obviously because everything's in the cloud. So it's all in the cloud so you can access it wherever whenever mm -hmm. and obviously google sheets as well is free software so it's not like i mean we've got we have got microsoft um tools as well but google sheets it's all free so it just makes a lot of sense basically yeah yeah cool so the next one is um whatsapp and this is something <laughs> i've mentioned before i know it's really basic but um but we have a whatsapp group for um the tenants in in our hmo um, just in the one um, and we also have like the sort of, sort of maintenance guys in there as well so you know somebody that will go out if there's a leak or whatever um, and for us that's just been a really good way of managing in terms of like um, keeping them updated we do also have a whiteboard in the house but I know that's like the low-tech version um, the, and the whiteboard literally has like you know our phone numbers and you know any in case of emergency stuff the British gas like landlord cover you know if they need to call British gas out um, but the WhatsApp group is just really handy, you know, if something mm -hmm. goes wrong, um, they just put it in there or, you know, um, if they need to communicate with each other, they sometimes do that through there as well. So we find that works really well. Yeah, definitely. So the next app slash website that I'm going to recommend is called Trello. So Trello's a really good like project management tool. I feel, do you know, what? I feel like I, I should be managing the refurb in Trello. Maybe I need to give that a go for the next one. Yeah, I think I think we could because like as well, obviously you can connect Trello to like different people, so you can like have a team of people on Trello. So in theory, we could have like our builder on Trello, so we're all looking at the same Trello board. We used to use Trello for like like when we had like property management issues, we used to log them in Trello, didn't we? Yeah, like we had like a sort of ongoing task. Thing. yeah and it wasn't it was it would never finish it was just ongoing yeah <laughs> but i'd say as well like if you ever wanted to like create a document that just had like all of your like power team in yeah. there yeah and like numbers and contact details for all of them trying to be, be like a really good place for that yeah. so yeah cool 
but there's like so many things you can do on Trello so just check out like YouTube videos on it and yeah you need to create some YouTube videos on Trello maybe yeah. <laughs> and, cool. then, and then the last thing that I wanted to mention so um, is this journal that I've created well I say a journal it's not a journal it's a planner I keep calling it a journal <laughs> but I've created like a planner for like property investors because I sort of know the things that I need to kind of keep focused and I kind of felt that it was really easy to just become a busy fool, particularly when we like when we first started looking, when we were like doing right move and we were looking at all these crazy locations and everything. And I just thought there's got to be a way of just trying to help people hone in on what it is they need to focus their time on. So, um, so I've done this planner um, that you can get on Amazon. So this planner, it's called the Property Investors Daily Planner. <laughs> it's an undated planner. It's got like 90 days worth of kind of actions you know stuff that you can have in there to motivate you kind of helps you focus on the why as well mm -hmm. so focus on why you're in property having a really focused strategy who's in your power team to remember that you don't have to do it all on your own so yeah, yeah. just something to help people out yeah definitely check it out i'll make sure i leave a link in the description down below but yeah i think that's it for like all the tools that we use cool. we are actually going to try um a new sort of software thing what's it called coho coho yeah so our mortgage broker actually recommended this to us it's like yeah. one of his friends i think it's just a way to kind of like manage all your tenants manage viewings yeah. and everything in like one place yeah i think it's going to be like a cross between spare room and go tenant so we'll have to see so yeah obviously if we like it then we'll let you guys know yeah but, yeah but thank you guys so much for watching make sure you subscribe so you don't miss anything and i'll see you next time bye bye so in terms of finding tenants for your property has the oven gone off no, I'm sorry still. <laughs> you can yeah. yeah you can find like live Ads, no, honestly, I'm so tired. So, <laughs> you can. <laughs>